the biblical truth of our hymn. Today we have a very lovely hymn. And we have a very, very dangerous hymn. We got a hymn that's biblically sound, but it's very dangerous. We got a hymn that, <clears throat> excuse me, we got much reading. And the hymn today is I Surrender All. Written by Judson W. Van De Vier. He was a music minister and evangelist. And to an inspiration, he says, For some time I had struggled between my talents in the field of art and going into full time evangelistic work. At last, a pivoting hour of my life came, and I surrendered all. A new day was ushered into my life. I became evangelist and discovered a deep down in, the, in my soul a talent here to unknown to me. God had hidden a song in my heart and touching a tender chord caused me to sing. Uh, he was born in Michigan. He was a layman for the Methodist Episcopal Church and this is about the eight, eight, mid 1800s. He had a talent for the ministry. And finally, he surrendered his life. He traveled to the United States, England, and Scotland, doing evangelistic work. He returned back to Florida, to the Florida Bible Institute in the 1920s. <coughs> Excuse me. And... I Surrender All has continued to appear in numerous English language hymns and publications. It is both a classical hymn and due to its gospel-like nature, also one that is performed by churches that prefer contemporary music. Be careful of contemporary music. In the late 1930s, when popular international evangelist Billy Graham was a student at Florida Bible Institute, he studied in the fellowship with Judson Van Meter, and later stated that Van Meter greatly influenced his early preaching. Graham subsequently popularized I Surrender All in massive crusades and revivals, beginning in the late 1940s. 1986 pop singer Denise Williams, who had her hit number one previous that year, Let's Hear It For The Boy, oh, I remember that stupid song, Released an uh, album of gospel songs titled So Glad I Know. And her performance, I Surrender All, got her the Grammy Award for the Best Female Soul Gospel Performance. Oprah Winfrey, we know who she is, has stated that the hymn played a pivoting role in her life. While she was still a minor Chicago talk show host, I didn't know she ever became a major. She had auditioned for a role of Sophia in 1985, The Color Purple, and desperately wanted the part, and after being told that the real actresses were only considered instead, she went to weight loss clamp, slimmed down, and last ever considered. She also ran a, the track. She, she surrendered her desperate desire to God and sang, I Surrender All, until it brought her a sense of peace and relief. And when she went back indoors, Steven Spielberg was on the phone offering her the part. Before her part and performance, she got the Academy Award and the Golden Globe. Blah, 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 blah. In 1925, singer Faith Hill played, appeared on Oprah Winfrey show during rehearsals. And Winfrey discovered Hill also had passion for the hymn. And she had her sing it on her Oprah after the show television program. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. And we're going to look at the danger. Mahila Jack Jackson, some of these names I don't know yet. Little Richard, on his album Beautiful God's Beautiful City. Denise Williams, Glenn Campbell, Carmen, his novel, The Holmes Brothers, Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith. Let me plan this. So, we got a hymn 
and inspired Oprah Winfrey to lose weight. And we got a hymn that's sung in churches, and forgive me, my throat is still tender from cold. I surrender all. And this is sung in, in, in Christian churches and Baptist churches. I said, it's a lovely, wonderful, biblical hymn. And I'm going to tell you also, it's a very dangerous hymn. Let's start off. All to Jesus I surrender. How many Christians sing that part in this hymn? In church, song leader gets up, we're going to sing, I surrender all. All right, music play. All to Jesus I surrender. I know I can't sing. How many Christians and how many worldly and how many unsaved people get up and sing, all to Jesus I surrender, and they had not, will not. So when you got somebody that gets up and says, all to Jesus I surrender, you're making them lie. Imagine an unsaved man visiting your church, all to Jesus I surrender. You haven't even believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. How are you going to surrender? You are making him believe something that's a lie. Well, I haven't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, but if I sing, I surrender all to Jesus. Now you're giving him falseness. And the worldly Christian who doesn't do nothing what the Bible says and Thinks it's an honor to God, to God that he even shows up in church. Oh, I gave my one day of the week. I surrender all. It's a beautiful hymn. But it's a dangerous hymn. All to him I freely give. You mean the guy who's putting the money in the clay in the collection plate or in the box at the back of the church and wants a record so he can claim it on his taxes? You mean to the guy that wants the position in the church and that's what he wants? You mean to the person that's only going to church because he wants that person that's sitting next to him to be their wife or their, their husband? Man, listen, there are people who get to God and they got an alternative motive. They're not giving freely. The minority of the church, of the church's minority, would, would it be honest that somebody would say, Jesus, I surrender, I freely give. I will ever love. Come on, Ophrah. You badmouth Jesus in the Bible. What was her name? It's here for the boy. You're sure not talking about the boy or the man Jesus. You got an unsaved man in your church saying, Oh, I will never love and trust him. You have not even believed on him. You're sure not going to love and trust him. If you have not come to Calvary, the, the empty tomb, and believed on him and become saved, a child of God, you're not going to love and trust him. A person in the church, I will forever love and trust thee. And, you know, go run off to the doctor and go run off to alcohol, go run off to tobacco, go run off to whatever they do. To not trust God and trust in the world. Oh, the words are beautiful and the words are right. But we're not looking at the word. We're looking at who is singing it. This is really not a congregational hymn to be sung. This is a song to be sung personally. You know, you may have a husband and a wife in a car, 
and this may be playing in the radio or the CD, and one of them may not be able to sing while the other one can sing this with a perfect heart. In his presence daily live. Imagine someone singing that and they don't daily read the Bible. They don't daily pray. They don't daily seek God. And when a congregation is told to open their hymnals through I Surrender All and start singing I Surrender All, there are Christians and there are lost people who will sing this hymn and they will sing it to a lie. And that Jesus said that every idle man shall give an account thereof. And the song leader or the pastor of the church said, okay, let's sing I Surrender All. To majority congregation who will not surrender all, who don't want to surrender all, and there may be not even in Christ. All to Jesus I surrender. You gotta say it four times. Humbly at his feet I bow. Can you see the problem with that one? With the worldly Christian and the unsaved? Man, the unsaved comes humbly bowing at the feet of Jesus. He's going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he's going to get saved. And I've been in many churches. I mean, here have not ever received Christ, don't know they're saved. They raise your hand. Okay, I see that hand. And then the invitation, nobody comes forward. They don't bow before the Lord Jesus Christ in salvation. But you had them saying, I surrender all. You have them say the words, I humbly bow, at, humbly at his feet, his feet, capital A, I bow, and they don't. Pastor, song leader, uh, it's a lovely, great hymn. But the danger is you got majority of your congregation who don't surrender all, don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. And there are some in your congregation, they're not saved at all. And at the words that they are singing, you're making them lie. This is a wonderful, great hymn. I would sing personally, if I could sing. But I would not put this in a congregational hymn book. I would have the choir sing it, make sure the choir was saved. Make sure, and the fact is, you're well, and some people in the choir could be doing it just for show and not do it. When, when I, I'm in the choir at my church, I'm there for the Lord. And if you're in the choir, you're not there for the Lord, and you have other alternative motives, or you're being forced to, to do it. Don't bother singing I Surrender All. It will be a lie to you. And it will be a lie before God. This is why I started in the long way back the biblical truth of our hymns to realize that there are hymns that are totally unbiblical. They're not right. There are hymns that will make a person sing in the church and they are lying before God and this is one of them. I, now listen. I am not mocking the hymn. I'm calling to effort who is singing the hymn in your congregation. We got Oprah Winfrey singing this hymn so she can lose weight and go on a television program and movie. And then badmouth Jesus in the Bible. I don't think she surrendered all, at least to Jesus, God Almighty, the Savior. We sang, I surrender all. We got Academy War. We got the global war. Yeah, you may sing it for an award, but you didn't sing it to the honor and glory of God. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. 
the Emmys, the Golden, uh, is that the things? So I can get into the movies? I can't come to church Wednesday nights because I, I got a job. I've got baseball. I got the men's club. Women's outing. There are majority of people in the congregation, pastor and song leader, they have not given up their worldly pleasures. And yet you have them saying, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. And Jesus is up in heaven. I don't want you. You haven't given your worldly pleasures to me. How dare you? Well, I'm singing because the church, keep your mouth shut. Our God's a holy God. He says, be holy. You can't be holy when you've got words you're singing that don't match your life. You are a hypocrite. You are a liar. Hypocrite. You say one thing. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. I don't surrender at all. Hypocrite. And thank the pastor and the song leader that would have you to sing this hymn. In church, where a majority of people don't surrender all, and of that majority, there are lost people who have not surrendered all. The minority of the church would say, Take me, Jesus, take me now. Now, many saved and lost. Later, Lord. Later, Lord. There are Christians who are not even looking forward to the rapture happening anymore. Later, Lord. We got to go to the pennant. I got to get married. I got to get to the to the to that position at work. Later, Lord. All to Jesus I surrender. If I don't number 3 lie. Make me Savior, holy thine. Not if you have not surrendered yourself. Not if you don't want to surrender yourself. Not if you want to humbly bow. Not if you freely given. You are asking God a lie about being taken by God. But you don't want to give yourself. I'm singing the hymn only because this pastor, the song leader said, All right, this hymn we're going to sing. I surrender all. May thy Holy Spirit fill me. Not if you don't want to be filled. Not if, you're, if your heart is in sin. Not if you're in the world. Not if you don't want to be right with God. You're not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you are filled with yourself, the Holy Spirit can't fill you. And when you're not even saved, the Holy Spirit ain't going to feed you or fill you. May I know thy power divine. There are many in the church that, that will hear the messages and they will hear the power of God and they'll never want to experience the power of God because they don't want to surrender. Church service was good enough for me. All oh, to Jesus I surrender. Lie number four for the majority. Not a lie number four for the minority. For those who love the Lord and want to do right and aiming and further and going and yeah, even come to Lord Jesus. It's true. But that is the minority of all churches. Because there are probably churches out there not one person in the congregation wants to serve the Lord and do right with the Lord. And to the majority and those that are lost, we're singing the hymn and they're lying.
Lord. I, all to Jesus I surrender. You know what Lord means? You are the master and I am the servant. Give me my orders. That's what Lord means. And that whatever I do, it was my duty to do. A servant become a nasty, vile, wicked word today. I give myself to thee. Oh, really? Miss Winthrop gave herself to thee? You mean Billy Graham, who, who, who was a great man, uh, evidently throughout his life, sold himself to the world? And watered down the word of God so he still can get what he got of men and, and great women? And when you got a lost man in the congregation, I give myself, want, okay, you want to give yourself to Jesus? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they walk out of the church house unsaved, unknown by God. Their name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. But they sang, I give myself to thee. And you had them, as the leader of your church, you had them speak a lie during the song service. Come on, come on. No, wait a minute. No, you're mad at me. You're mad at me. Uh, congregation, whatever book. Uh, we're going to sing I Surrender All, okay? And there are people lost in your church. There are worldly Christians in your church. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord. I give myself to thee. Terrible singer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven words in the fourth stanza. Which words are right to the worldly Christian? Which words are to those that are, are, are visiting your church that are lost? Which words of those eleven words that we just read were correct? I'm not talking about the ones that love the Lord and want to do right with the Lord. I'm talking to the majority of people in the congregation. How many sang all four stanzas of this hymn as you called them to sing? And every single word, and I just said 11 words there. Every single word that they sang before the congregation in the presence of the Holy Spirit. How many sang this hymn because you had them to sing it and you caused them to lie? Fill me with thy love and power. God ain't going to fill an unsaved man with love when he rejected the love of God. God is not going to give power to an unsaved man. God is not going to give a Christian who won't do any service at all any power. That love and power is reserved to one who wants to do right. Not one point of this hymn will be sung, uh, that was sung by a Christian, is going to get the promises of this hymn, and there are promises in this hymn, if they don't read their Bible. Or they don't try to read their Bible. When the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. No one's going to get the, the greatest effort of this hymn when they don't go out and try to get people saved when the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Not a, a, a word of this hymn will be true to a man where he gives the praise to somebody and something else where Paul says for the Christian, before God, rejoice evermore. Let thy blessings fall upon let thy blessings fall on me. None of you disobedient, none if you're a child of God, and the blessings you're going to get, it rains upon the just and the unjust. The unjust gets partial reward because of the just. 
America is America who she is, and England is who she is today because there are a few Bible-believing, born-again Christians that are praying and reading and studying and doing what Jesus told them to do. And when you want to know what's going to happen when God pulls all the Christians out of the world, you, you got that, that what's going to happen. It's called Jacob's trouble. It's called the tribulation period. I surrender all. And what if you don't? I surrender all. What if you don't? All to thee. What if you don't give all? What if you get partial? What if you don't give nothing? My blessed sin. Blessed means happy. All right, you're a Christian. You're a worldly Christian. You make God sick. Revelation chapter 3. You're not making Jesus blessed. You're not making God happy. And he's going to chastise his children. That's not a happy God. And then I surrender all. And what if you don't? I said it's a great, wonderful hymn. But it's a dangerous him. That the world is knowledge. I can get an Emmy. I can get a, a, a Tony. I can get whatever re a reward of the world. I can get to, to, to lose weight and get a television. And I can get an, another unsaved person to sing this song for me. So there are people out there who think one of their if I do a gospel album, God will be pleased. For one gospel album and for ten of them just filth and adultery and murder and drunkenness and cigarettes and, and sin and sin and sin. But if I can do one gospel music album, like I mean even Elvis Presley, Elvis the Pelvis, the king of rock and roll. And when you read about his filthy life written by one of his bodyguards, and he did gospel music, but he didn't live it as a Christian. The words of I surrender all proper and great. But I called the question. Who is singing, I surrender all? And Jesus said, and I think it's Matthew 12, every idle word shall a man give an account. If you're singing this hymn and it's idle words, you're going to give an account. God will say, okay, you were in church. Yeah. Okay, you sang I, all to Jesus, I surrender. Well, well Lord, the, the, the guy told me to open up that page, but you sang it. Uh, they, the, the congregate, you sang it. But Lord, the, 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 you sang it. And you didn't do anything of the words of that hymn that you, but Lord, they had me the page number day and everybody, ah! Adam, why did you eat the fruit? It was her, Lord. Why did you? It was a serpent. I believe that when you got a congregation going to sing, sing a hymn, this is why we do the biblical truth of our hymn. You got them singing a hymn that does not match their life, even if it's a wonderful, great hymn. It is danger for the pastor, the song leader, and the congregation. That's why you don't have all our welcome to church. The Bible never says all are welcome to church.
I Surrender All is a great hymn for a Christian that loves the Lord and wants to do right. It is not for the Christian that walks cold. It's not for the Christian that walks down the middle of the road. And it's definitely for surely not for somebody to come to church who is lost and will not get saved to sing. Now, if you got somebody who get who, who in the church service comes up, repents, and gets right, becomes a child of God, glory to God. But if you got I surrender all and he just got saved, he doesn't know what he's singing. He just got saved. Be like taking a newborn baby. Would you like a hot fudge chocolate? Sunday with, with, with caramel and, and, and whipped cream and sparkles and sprinkles and a cherry on top. <laughs> this is for a Christian who is aged, who's gone through some battles, and who has come to his life and, and, and recognized as the disciple, you know, I gotta leave mother, I gotta leave father, I gotta leave brothers and sisters. I may even have to leave wife. I may have to leave. And I got to give up to myself. I know what that all is. I, I know what the battle is. And with all that in conflict, I'm going to fight the good fight. I will surrender all. This is a hymn for a Christian who is aged. This is not for a new Christian that's going to walk the floor, the aisle, and come up and receive Jesus Christ. Because there are many who go and walk that and kneel at the altar and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they never ever come back to church. Never mind a baptism. And even their salvation, I call the question. I surrender all is a great hymn. For those who are aged in the Lord. It's not for the worldly congregation. And it's for sure not for the lost. 